welcome to this episode of God Questions. I'm Matt McClary. God Questions is basically a way for you to ask questions um, about God and Jesus um, and we'll do our best to answer them for you um, through a video. So the way that you ask your question is you contact us by email. Um, email us at godquestions at kingswisbeach.org.uk or you can um, send us a message on Facebook through our pages Kings Wisbeach or Messy Wisbeach and we will then take your questions and then create a video in response to them. You can watch those videos on either of our Facebook pages on our website kingswisbeach.org.uk or of course on our YouTube channel as well. Okay, so the question I'm looking at on this episode is this. What made you want to believe that God is looking after you? Okay, so for me, this question um, can be broken into two parts. The first part is, what made me believe? And the second part is, how do I know God is looking after me? So, let's start with the first part. Um, okay, nothing made me believe. You choose to believe. Okay, it's all to do with free will. Now, God gave us free will to enable true love to exist. Without free will, we'll just be like a robot going through the motions, doing what we're programmed to do. You have to do this. You have to love or worship God. Um, and that's, that's that. Okay, which kind of takes love out of the equation. So for true love to exist, there needs to be free will so that you can choose to love or not. You can choose to worship God or not. So for love to exist, um, free will needs to exist as well. Okay, so believing in God um, basically is a choice, okay? And when you choose to believe in someone or something, um, it's called faith. So you have faith in whatever it is you choose to believe in or the thing that you choose to believe in. Okay. So how did this work for me? Right. So um, I was in my teenage years. Um, I heard some old hymns I was, that I sung at, at church at the time and the words were really coming alive to me. Um, some messages that I heard at, at, at other sort of Christian meetings um, it was like it was like that message was meant for me. Um, it was like they were talking straight at me into my situation, into my life. Um, uh, and also through everyday events, things would happen. I'd think, wow, how did they know that? Or how did God know about that? So, so God was communicating to me through these things. Often people say God said or I heard God say. It's not really a voice that they hear. It's, occasionally it can be a voice you can actually hear. But most of the time it's through impressions or dreams or bits of the Bible that sort of stand out to you or song words that come alive to you. That kind of thing you, people talk about as hearing God talk to them because they've realized the connection between that and God sort of using that to tell them something. OK, so God was talking to me in that way um, for a while. I came to a point in my life when um, somebody explained to me that to become a Christian, to, be, to believe in Jesus, um, you, you actually have to make a choice for yourself, okay? So you don't become a Christian by going to church. You don't become a Christian by being born into a Christian country or into a Christian family, okay? The way you become a Christian is to make a personal decision for yourself. You choose to love Jesus. You choose to believe. And that way you have faith. Okay. And you've exercised your free will. All right. Going back to what I said a little while ago. So someone explained that to me and I thought, you know, actually, this is something I want to do because I do believe. And so I need to choose to surrender my life to Jesus and to follow him. OK, so I repented. I said I, I turned away from my sin and I gave Jesus control of my life so that he could lead me where he wanted me to go and I would follow him. 
Now, there's still times when I get things wrong. I still do some wrong stuff, so I need to still repent of that and keep turning and, and walking towards Jesus. I still need to surrender and say, oh, I'm sorry, Jesus, I've tried to control my life again, or I've tried, I thought this was the right way, but actually it's your way, it's your will that I want to, to follow. And so forgive me for trying to do it my way, which of course has ended in a mess. So I still have to repent and I still surrender um, fairly regularly because that's just part of what of being a Christian is about. So nothing really made me believe. I made a decision. I made a choice to believe. Okay, so the second part. So um, how do I know God is looking after me? Okay, well, I know he looks after me because number one, the Bible tells me that he does. And also secondly, number two, I've experienced this for myself. Okay, so I believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. And it says a lot of things about God being with us, God helping us, God shielding and protecting us in times of trouble or suffering or trial. Okay, so I choose to believe that what the Bible tells me about suffering and trial and that kind of thing is true. Now, there's so much from the Bible that I could tell you about, but I've just chosen one specific um, section of it. This is from Psalm 23. I'm only going to pick out some of the relevant bits. I'm going to leave out a chunk of what I'm reading just to help the video not be too long. Um, but I just want to read you some of Psalm 23 because this is one of the places where it talks about God looking after us in times of trouble or suffering. Okay, so Psalm 23 and it says this, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, and some versions of the Bible, some translations say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, so that is one passage, and you can see there that God is saying, I am with you, even when you are in the darkest place in your life. I am there to comfort you, there to guide you, there to help you, even when you are sort of about to face death. Okay. Please note it doesn't say this will never happen to you as a Christian. That's not true. When you become a Christian, you don't get some sort of magical force field surrounding you and all the bad stuff in life kind of bounces off it and you live a life that's magically free from suffering or trial. That's not the case. Christian life is as much as any other kind of um, human experience. You will have trials, you will have suffering. Um, as part of life, because that's what life is in a, a sinful and fallen world, which is what we're living in. The thing is, by being a Christian, and, and this is the key, um, that there is help in the midst of the storm. You are not alone. Elsewhere in the Bible, in the New Testament, um, it, there's a story of, told of Jesus being asleep in a boat. And all the disciples are in the boat with him and a storm blows up and all the disciples are terribly afraid. Oh, we're going to die. The storm's going to sink the ship. And Jesus gets woken up and he says, oh, you of little faith. Don't you know that you're OK? Because I am with you. In the end, he stills the storm and everything's fine. But what I want you to get from that is that in the ship of our lives, in the boat that we're traveling in. If Jesus is in there with you, you are safe and you are okay. Even if there's a major storm rattling around all around you and throwing you about. 
If Jesus is in your boat with you, you are not alone. You are sheltered. You are held in the midst of the storm. So in 2016, um, I was diagnosed with cancer. Um, and this is one of my many experiences in life where um, I know that God looks after me in, in troubling times. So at this time, um, at the very beginning, I was, I was scared. Um, I, was, I, had, I was afraid. So I, I prayed. I went to God and I prayed and spent some time with Jesus. And basically, he replaced my fear with peace. Um, I also learned during that time that I had to surrender. So I knew that this disease was beyond me. I did not have the strength or the capacity to fight it myself. I needed God to fight for me. All I did was sit there or lie there and God, God did the stuff. Now God fought for me as well as the medicine. Um, I believe God gives people gifts and talents and skills and abilities and knowledge and wisdom. And some people, that particular gift and talent and knowledge is to do with medicine. So God has given us medicine and he has also given us faith. We don't need to separate the two. The two come together because they are both gifts of God. So that's the way I approached the disease. I had faith and I had medicine. Okay. Now, during that time, um, Bible verses were also coming alive to me. People were praying for me. Um, people were encouraging me, comforting me. Which was, which was great. Um, I also um, had this amazing peace that God had given me during this time. Um, and I just knew deep down in my spirit that God was with me and that I didn't have to be afraid of the treatment. I didn't have to be afraid even of death um, because he was there and he was in control. And because I know him and he knows me, um, I knew that it would be all right. Even if I died, I knew that it would be okay. Um, so I could just trust and rest um, in, in that knowledge, knowing deep down the safe security of my soul that Jesus was there and it would be all, all right. Even if I died, it would be all right. Even if I lived, it would be all right. So what made me want to believe? Nothing made me believe. I chose to believe. And how do we know that God is looking after me or us? Um, we know because the Bible tells us. And we can also know because when we're, when we're there and when we cry out to him and when we really sort of ask him to step in and help, um, he does. So I know through my experience as well. So I hope that's answered your question. I've tried the best of my ability to answer that one today. Um, if you have any other questions to ask, please email us at godquestions at kingswisbeach.org.uk. Um, so thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon on another episode of God Questions.